Hello, everybody. This is Dave from AskUncleDave.com. At WWDC 2016, Apple introduced Mac OS Sierra. That's their newest operating system. It gives you Siri, lots of things you can do with photos, as well as use Apple Pay and unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. And there's a universal clipboard and a whole bunch of other features that Apple didn't even talk about. So if you wanted to try it, you would have to be a developer and you would sign on to your Apple developers account and then find the corresponding download and download uh, right to your um, hard drive. It would be like a DMG and you would open it up and you can run it over uh, your El Capitan as a dirty copy so that it just updates it. Or you can side, you know, decide to load it up onto a USB drive and pop it in and do a fresh clean install. Well, today I'm going to show you how to get a copy of this uh, without being a developer. So if you wanted to be able to try this, not being a developer, you would have to wait until the fall. You would enroll into the program and then you would get an invite and then they would hook you up with it. But I'm going to show you today, there's a website and it's uh, well known. It's called evaders.net uh, and they have a post here and it tells you where you can get copies of the operating system. So if we click on the article itself, you're going to see that there are some links here. Now, the first link is a direct link. So if you click that, you would get the operating system load up in Mega. That's uh, like Dropbox, but uh, a little bit different. And there's a description key that you need to put in. So if you go back to the website, there's the decryption key right here. And you would copy that and you would put it right into the field here and hit that and then hit decrypt. And then it would open up and allow you to download the download uh, right to your downloads folder on your Mac. So basically you would download it and it would show up in your downloads. Now, the other way to download it is to use a torrent and torrents are uh, multi-files that get uh, pieced together uh, with programs. So basically you would open up your Dropbox and there's a shared uh, zip. You would hit download and it would download the raw file. So now if you go into your downloads folder, you're going to see the uh, zip right here. You could just unzip uh, that and then you would get a torrent file. Then you would click the torrent file. Uh, I already have it loaded, but you would load it into your uTorrent program. That's a program that downloads uh, torrents. So that file there uh, would allow you to download it. So I have it already downloaded and I also use that mega site and I downloaded it already. So I downloaded it both ways so I can show you. So let's close this out now and I want to show you that I have them here in my downloads folder. So here I have the zip that the torrent was in. And then I used the torrent to open um, uTorrent and it, it opened it up. Uh, then I clicked it and it downloaded it to my computer. So I have two copies of Sierra, uh, one from Mega, uh, that's the direct download, and the other one from the torrent. Okay. So what you do pretty much uh, is that you click on it like this and it will try to verify it uh, through your software, but you can just hit skip and it would skip it and it'll open it up right here on your desktop. So if you actually double click this, uh, you would it would open up and it would start verifying with with uh, Apple uh, that you have a developer copy, right? So if you just close it out like this, and we we'll use the other one here, let's open up that one, and we'll hit skip. And if you click it, you now will be able to install without the verifying process. So it says here. Now what it says here is that you can't install this copy on directly on to the operating system that you're using, the hard drive that you're using. So the best way to do this is to install it onto a thumb drive like I have here. I have a thumb drive here. Uh, this is an eight gigabyte thumb drive and it's formatted to Mac O Extended Journal. Uh, basically, we only need about six of it. So we're going to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to format that thumb drive. We'll pop it open. And then basically, you're just going to copy and paste the installer right into your thumb drive. OK, so we have it on a thumb drive. OK, and instead of launching it from our computer, we're going to close these out and we're going to launch it from the thumb drive itself. OK. So we'll close that out. Now you have a copy of this installer on your thumb drive. So we'll just force eject it because it was in the middle of doing it. So let's open up our thumb drive here and we're going to click on this and install it right from here because it knows it will be on a thumb drive and you'll be able to pick the drive that you want to install it on. Now, speaking of that, I have my uh, Samsung SSD. That's my main hard drive that has my operating El Capitan on it. And I also have a one terabyte old fashioned spinning drive uh, that I actually pulled from the original hard drive on this Mac. And I put it onto uh, my CD. Uh, uh, where my CD-ROM used to be, that's SATA there. So now I have two drives, one holds my operating system, and the other one is just a drive that I use for iTunes and storage and all that stuff. I'll show you what it looks like. So I got a whole bunch of stuff on here, and if my computer goes down, I can pull this drive and I'll still have it on. It's almost like a USB drive, but connected via SATA inside my Mac. So what I need to do is on my main hard drive, I need to make a partition. 
because I don't want to install this Sierra right onto my Mac and then have that as my only Mac software. I still want to use El Capitan because it's more polished uh, operating system. And then I'll be able to test it on a uh, partition. So to do that, we're going to hit disk utilities, right? I'm sorry, I spelled it wrong. Disk utilities. And we open up disk utilities. Now disk utilities uh, will be able to make a partition. Now you got the operating system that you downloaded from Evaders and you put it on your thumb drive. All right, so we'll put that aside. Here's the thumb drive right there. So now we have different hard drives. This is the one that I replaced my CD-ROM with. That's my backup hard drive. And then I have my Samsung. That's this one here. And I have only one partition. Basically, it's the whole one terabyte. Okay. And there goes my thumb drive. So I'm going to click on the main heading of my uh, operating system hard drive, the one terabyte SSD. And I'm going to click partition. Now here, you're going to see the whole volume is one uh, terabyte. It's actually a little less than one terabyte, very little less than one terabyte. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a partition to it. So I'm going to hit plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll this I'm sorry. I'm going to click on the, I'm going to click on plus. Well, let me just get rid of this one because I made it back. So I'm going to hit this and I'm going to shrink it down to as little as I can. Let me just shrink that like that. And this is going to be my, my El Capitan. And then this little small 45 gigabytes is going to be my partition. So I'm going to call this one Sierra. I hope I'm spelling it right. So there goes Sierra, and it's 45 gigs on this one terabyte. So I'm going to hit Apply, and it's going to go through its little thing. It's going to shrink down, uh, make the room, and now essentially you're going to have almost like two hard drives for the price of one. So that 45 gigabyte hard drive, we're going to install the El Capitan. Now, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to boot into whatever one you want. I can boot into the El Capitan, the one I use every day, and then when I want to play around and check out Siri and all that other good stuff, I can go and boot into my... Uh, other 45 gigabyte drive that has Sierra on it. So we'll wait for this to stop. I'll fast forward through. Okay, so we got our check mark here, and now you're going to see that I have two drives there. Let me close that. You're going to have two drives uh, right on one drive. It's so the main drive here, and then we have the El, um, El Capitan, and then we have the Sierra uh, drive, but it's completely empty right now. It doesn't have anything in it. It's only 45 gigs, okay? So now we have that. Now you would think that you would restart the computer and then hit the alt option key to boot into that uh, smaller hard drive. But you don't have an operating system on it yet. And even if you went into startup disk and you look for it, you wouldn't see that extra partition because it's not a bootable drive that boots you into a firmware or, or an operating system. So what we need to do is we need to use the thumb drive. We'll pop it open. Now this is connected to a USB in my computer. So we're going to click on this and you're going to see it's going to open it up um, and it's going to go right into where you need to develop. Uh, it's the preview DMG. So we're going to hit continue, and we're going to agree to the terms. Now, we don't have a developer's account, but we have this download here. So now you don't want to install. You can install Dirty right over your old operating system. But I'm going to choose to show all this, and I'm going to pick that partition, uh, that 45 gigabyte partition. I'm going to leave my El Capitan where, right where it is so I can use both and be able to play around. So we're going to hit install. We're going to put in our password that we normally sign into our Mac with. And it's going to take about seven minutes. And when it's all done, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to show you what to do next. So we'll let that go. Okay, so now the computer is going to automatically restart. Let me uh, save this recording. Okay, now I switched over to the external camera because I want to show you what happens. So we're going to hit restart. And there are other applications. So we're going to close this out. And the computer will restart. I had some applications running in the background. So it's going to restart the computer. Our thumb drive is still plugged in. We started the process of installing Sierra with our El Capitan on our desktop. And we chose to install it on that partition drive. So we'll let it do its thing. It's going to restart. So the computer will restart a couple of times. Right now it's loading Sierra onto that partition. Okay, we're just about done now. It's going to restart. The whole time the thumb drive light was on, the little uh, LED light was on. It wasn't blinking, it was just a solid color. And now it seems the Mac is restarting. And there it is, all by itself. We got the Apple logo. Once again, it's restarted. And there we have it, Sierra on our partition. 
So let me just jump through the steps because there's some things I want to show you that you might not have known. I'm going to connect to my Airport Express, and we're going to hit Continue. I'm going to raise the brightness up a little bit. So we're connected to my Wi-Fi now. And you can transfer or you can do whatever, but I'm going to start this up. Uh, I'm not going to transfer any information or anything like that now. So I'm going to hit Continue. I'm going to do like a clean install. And then we hit Continue. I'm going to put my Apple ID in. Okay, we're going to hit Continue now. We're going to sign in with our Apple ID, our iCloud ID. And we're going to hit Agree and Agree. And we have, you can call this whatever you want. And I'm going to put a password in. I'm going to use the same password I use for my El Capitan. So we created a computer name just now. It's like and we'll set up Keychain later, but I like to set that up. And I'm not going to use iCloud right now because I hate getting that message show up on my phone every five seconds to buy more iCloud storage. So we're going to enable Siri and we're setting up the Mac. All right, and there we have it. We're right on our desktop for Sierra. Now, you don't see my drives here anymore, and I'm going to show you how you can enable to see all your drives, including your network drives. So if you're in Finder here, you can click on Finder, you can click on Preferences, and in the General tab, you can show all your hard disks and all your connected servers, like your NAS or your Airport Extreme hard drives and things like that. And then you have all of your things you want to show up. You want to show music, all of your folders, things like that, in the Finder window. And then you can do file extensions and all that other stuff. So if you close that out now, you're going to see all my drives here. So here's the thumb drive with El Capitan. We can inject that now because we don't need it anymore. And then you have my 45 gigabyte Sierra drive, as well as that hard drive that I replaced my CD-ROM. And then this is my El Capitan hard drive. I'm not currently booted in my El Capitan, but the good thing is uh, you can open up and you can go like to users, the name of your computer. And then basically, if you have things like in your documents uh, or if you have things like in your downloads folder that you download it, uh, you can actually go in here and pull uh, them right over to your new operating system, the Sierra that you're running. So I like that cross, the way you can transfer things over from one uh, operating system on a partition to another. And I think that's great. And then the other good thing is, uh, if you do open up any uh, file, like say on my El Capitan, I have the uTorrent app, okay? So if I go over to um, my user, MacBook Pro, uh, and I can go into my downloads folder again, if I click on this uTorrent, now I currently do not have uTorrent uh, installed on my computer. I'll show show you right here. In Finder, in Applications, you don't see uTorrent here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to that Downloads folder that's on my uh, El Capitan hard drive, and I'm just going to click this, and watch this. uTorrent just automatically installs. You don't have to reinstall all of your, your apps. So now I can hit Open, and now uTorrent is running. I, I didn't have to install it on Sierra. It was already on El Capitan, and I just had to open up the torrent file, and it automatically launched the app and opened it. Uh, right on. I'm not going to copy that. And it automatically opened it. Now, if I did the same thing with a Final Cut document or even, you know, Word or whatever, because it's on the El Capitan, I can automatically just start using it on here, if it's compatible, of course. The other thing is, if you go into Settings now, and you click on Startup, the program Startup, you're going to see both now, the regular El Capitan and then that partition with Sierra on it. So I can click the Unlock button, put in my password for my El Capitan, and I can unlock and boot into it. So we're going to restart, and I'm going to show you something else. When you restart, we're going to quit this, and it boots into the El Capitan, the original one. It's going to ask you for a disk password so that you can access the hard drive on the Sierra as well. You don't have to hit the options key or anything like that because we set it up in startup. So now it's going to start up the El Capitan. So you're dual booting your Mac, and there's the password for your disk Sierra. So you can just put in your password. That's why I recommend using the same password and being able to unlock your Sierra drive now. So you can, if you have things on there that you want to bring back over. So anyway, this has been the install of Sierra. OS, uh, I'm sorry, not OS X, Mac OS. And this is the way to do it without a developer's account. It's a great way to install uh, Sierra on a second on a partition on your hard drive. And it's also a good way, developers can do this too, uh, if they want to you know, make it easier. Instead of going in, using the Create Media install that Apple offers, 
or some disk, uh, you know, writer or whatever. You could just do it this way, and it's just so much easier. So let's ask Siri a question. Siri, how do you like being in my video? Let me check that. Yeah. Okay, I found this on the web for how do you like being in my video. Yeah, yeah. she don't know who I am right now because my name's not in the contacts. But this is it. You have any questions, leave them in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe for more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.